हेलो सिटीजन ऑफ इंटरनेट आई एम प्रोफेसर अजीत बेरकुड फ्रॉम मुंबई इंडिया टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डू अ मास्टर क्लास ऑन यूरो डायनेमिक स्टडीज आई हैव डिवाइडेड दिस टॉपिक इनटू टू पार्ट्स दिस इज पार्ट वन लिंक टू पार्ट टू इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो यूरो डायनेमिक स्टडीज रिफर्स टू द मेजरमेंट ऑफ फंक्शनल चेंजेस इन द लोअर यूनिट ट्रैक ओवर टाइम वेन एक्सप्लेनिंग इट टू माई पेशेंट हु मे नीड दिस टेस्ट I tell them that it is an ECG of the bladder. Urodynamic studies are cumbersome and often not available in India. They are also quite expensive and therefore not advised by many gynecologists or urogynecologists. Also, the reports given by the labs where they are done are so confusing that referring physicians do not understand what the report says. and today in this master class i am going to clear all your doubts by telling you the basics and technical minutiae of euro dynamic studies so stick on till the end before i start i want to give a little preamble related to this topic i learned the technical minutiae of euro dynamic studies during my visits to the urology department in Bellinson Hospital in Tel Aviv Israel where i had been invited for a visiting fellowship to be honest many of the minute points about uds were taught to me by the technicians in the department who had many years of experience on returning to india i started working as a urogynecologist and honed my skills over many years of practice at kb baba municipal hospital where i was a head of unit and then head of department and in private practice later i was appointed as key opinion leader to gynecare division of johnson and johnson company they have a center of excellence at mahim in mumbai where they conduct many teaching courses for this topic i used to conduct a 3 day master class on urogynecology which was attended by gynecologists urologists and urogynecologists from all over india this gave me a lot of experience in teaching the art and science of urogynecology especially urodynamic studies as usual first some basics there are two types of urodynamic studies standard urodynamic study and another type which is done less often and that is called video or fluoroscopic urodynamic study later i will show why fluoroscopic urodynamic study should be preferred as it gives more information unfortunately it is not available in most cities in india what are the indications for performing this test urodynamic studies should be done if it is likely to change the management or when clinical studies are done for publication purposes one clear cut area where urodynamic study is very helpful is for a patient who has previously undergone surgery for stress urinary incontinence which has failed and or for pelvic organ prolapse repair another indication is urge incontinence cases prior to surgical procedures or operations it is not required before conservative or medical treatment of urinary incontinence when teaching my postgraduate students instead of telling them about the various indications i prefer to tell them when is uds not required urodynamic studies are not required in women less likely to benefit from urodynamics which are younger than 65 years of age and have no significant complications predominant symptoms of stress urinary incontinence no history of urinary urgency radiation or neurologic conditions no prolapse past the introitus that is second or third degree prolapse normal neurologic post void residual urine bladder capacity and urinalysis findings and positive results on stress urinary testing such as cop stress test it is not required before conservative or medical treatment of urinary incontinence whether urodynamic studies should be done 
for all cases requiring surgical management or only in selected cases is debatable and the jury is still out in this matter to answer the question of universal versus selective use of this test there is a study conducted a multicentric randomized trial called value study concluded that office evaluation alone is not inferior to office evaluation along with urodynamic study in cases of urinary incontinence this is level 1 evidence the reference for the same is given here first it is important to know what are the objectives of this test these are as follows capacity compliance competency of urethral sphincter which is perhaps the most important objective contractibility completeness and communication i call them the six c's the following tests must be done prior to performing urodynamic studies bladder diary the biggest voided volume must be noted symptom score urine routine and microscopic examination to rule out urinary tract infection and rarely malignancy this is important medical legally it must be done at least 10 days prior because if infection is found antibiotics have to be given for 7 days or more to treat it dipstick urine analysis the patient must carry these test reports to the urodynamic study lab there is no need to fast you can have your breakfast and come to the uds lab take your usual morning medication before discussing the procedure and how to analyze the computer generated uds graphs which i must admit are at times very confusing let me discuss a few basics so that you are on a solid foundation to understand them this is a patient who complains of a urinary leak that is urinary incontinence from the study basically we want to know whether the urinary leak is caused by a detrusor contraction or by pure stress without any detrusor contraction or a bit of both so let's address this problem as engineers would do in order to demonstrate whether detrusor contraction is causing the leak you need to put a pressure catheter in the bladder and measure the intravesical pressure which we will call pves but it is not as simple as that to calculate the increased pressure caused by contraction of the detrusor muscle you must also measure the intra abdominal pressure which we will call as pap which is done by inserting a pressure catheter into the rectum or vagina and then measure both the pressures when she coughs or strains then subtracting intra abdominal pressure pap from the intra vesical pressure pves will give you the true detrusor pressure referred to as pdet in other words detrusor pressure is calculated by subtracting abdominal pressure from intra vesical pressure the unit of pressures measured is in centimeters of water don't worry you don't have to do it yourself the computer will do it for you a real time graph of these pressures is generated by the computer software which we will discuss later having talked about the pre procedure preparation i will now take a deep dive into the technical details of the standard urodynamic study so pay close attention urodynamic study comprises three main components first urophorometry to study how the woman passes urine second filling systemetry to know how the bladder reacts to bladder filling with urine and lastly voiding systemetry where we record and analyze the pressure details when the woman passes urine the last part is very difficult to understand and i will try to make it as easy as i can to make you understand it to put it more succinctly urophorometry assesses emptying function of the bladder filling systemetry assesses the storage function and voiding systemetry assesses 
micturition function. Once at the lab, give her an information sheet about the UDS she is about to undergo. Patient is usually nervous and frightened. Talk to her and provide her with all the information about the study so that she knows what to expect. Reassure her and tell her to follow the instructions properly. Tell her not to be embarrassed about leaking urine because that is exactly what she has come to test. Take a written informed consent. The test cannot be done under sedation or anesthesia as patient's active participation is a must. Uroflowmetry is performed as follows. Patient with full bladder voids into a special commode which measures the volume and flow rate of the urine path. The attached computer then generates a graph of the same. She should be relaxed. The lab technician should go out of the room to give her privacy. She must not strain while voiding. She must pass at least 200 ml of urine for the study to be adequate. This is a diagrammatic representation of Uroflowmetry pressure profile. Normally, UPP is a smooth bell curve. If the voided volume is less than 150 to 200 ml, the study may not be accurate. One must know what is Qmax. It is the maximum urine flow rate sustained for at least one second. The normal Qmax is 20 to 36 ml per second. Some consider 15 as the lower limit. Please note that a prolonged intermittent flow rate may be abnormal. A low Qmax could be due to obstructive voiding or detrusor hypercontractibility. There is another parameter that they talk about sometimes that is Q average. It is the volume of urine voided divided by flow time. It is not accurate and therefore not that important. Volume time is the total time taken to complete voiding including periods when the flow is interrupted. Please note the actual Uroflowmetry graph may not look like the diagram I have shown earlier. This is an actual Uroflowmetry graph. Here are some abnormal Uroflowmetry patterns that you must be aware of. A plateau shaped curve suggests bladder outlet obstruction, which could be due to pelvic organ prolapse, urethral stricture, external compression by, for example, pelvic fibroids, after anti incontinence surgery, or a weakly contractile bladder. Tower shaped graph is suggestive of poor active bladder. A staccato shaped curve suggests dysfunctional voiding and an interrupted shape suggests underactive detrusor with abdominal straining. The second part is filling systematry. This part is done to assess storage capacity of bladder. The color coded catheters which are required are shown. A 6 to 7 French PVC color coded blue filling catheter and a pressure sensor are introduced into the bladder for 12 to 15 centimeters. A 6 to 7 French PVC color coded red pressure sensor is also introduced into the rectum or into the vagina to measure the intra-abdominal pressure. This is also introduced for about 12 to 15 centimeters inside. Many make a small cut into the balloon for a better recording. Secure both the catheters with adhesive tape as close to the insertion as possible. Lastly, place two active EMG patches perianally at about 3 and 10 o'clock positions. Attach the ground EMG patch on the woman's thigh or a bony prominence. Connect the color-coded catheters to the appropriate color-coded transducers, making sure that they are in open position prior to connecting. Attach the pump tubing to the filling port of vesical catheter. Be sure that all the connections are tight and secure. Before starting to record, there is one more important thing to be done, which was taught to be by the technicians at the Eurodynamic Lab at Bellinson Hospital in Tel Aviv, where I learned all the details. You have to press the zero all button to bring all the baseline pressures to zero. 
This is called zeroing to atmospheric pressure and must always be done prior to starting. There's one more thing. Ensure that the height of the transducers is at the level of the pubic symphysis of the woman when she is standing and when she is sitting down on the commode, adjust the height level to the level of pubic symphysis. These are small but important points which are never taught. Now, change the transducers to charge position. Then press the run or start button to start recording. After asking the woman to cough, both the channels should respond equally with the P dead, which refers to the detrusor pressure remaining flat. If not, press the pre dead button to bring it to zero. Start filling the bladder by clicking the start pump button, ensuring that the fluid in the intravenous tubing is running freely. Instruct the patient to inform you when she gets the first sensation where she could empty the bladder. This is the first desire to void, which is when the woman would go to the bathroom if it were readily available. Strong desire is when the woman should empty the bladder due to uncontrollable desire to empty the bladder. Capacity is when she can no longer hold the urine anymore in her bladder. Once the woman has reached capacity of 150 ml, press the stop pump button. Then press the stress test button and ask her to perform a series of two or three coughs, each cough harder than the previous one. Once finished, press the stress test button again. Ask the woman if there was a leak of urine. If yes, then mark it on the graph at the biggest spike of pressure during coughing. Now do the same while asking the woman to do a Valsarva maneuver or bearing down, which is asking her to hold her breath and push. This is called Valsarva leak point pressure test. The software will ask again if there was a leak of urine. If she says no, you mark the peak pressure with a marking peak no leak. If there was a leak, press the stress leak button. After measuring the leak point pressure, start the pump again and record again stopping every 150 ml or so until you are satisfied that you have completed a good example of the woman having stress leak. You can ask the patient to stand up and jump to ensure a leak if required. What to do if the woman does not leak during the test? Once bladder capacity is attained, woman is asked to stand and made to perform all those activities that caused incontinence such as coughing, walking, jumping, whatever movement that causes her to leak. A tap water may be run or woman's hands may be put in cold water which causes some women to leak. I will mention some normal values assessed during the filling phase. Maintain the flow rate at 50 to 100 ml per minute and the maximum filling volume should not be greater than 500 ml. The first sensation of bladder filling is normally at 90 to 150 ml. The first desire to void should occur between 200 to 400 ml and the normal value for strong desire to void is 400 to 600 ml. Here are some diagrammatic representations of the graphs in different situations. In this graph, one can see that during coughing, there is increase in PIP and PVS, but there is no increase in P debt, suggesting absence of any detrusor contraction. The increased flow of urine at the bottom line suggests that there was a leak both times. The inference from this diagram is that this patient has stress urinary incontinence. On the other hand, this graph shows that there is an involuntary detrusor contraction which may be spontaneous or provoked by coughing. However, there is no urinary leakage as reported by the patient. The two blips on the red line representing P dead tells you that there were two detrusor contractions but there was no leak. Hence, the diagnosis is detrusor overactivity without urinary leak. This graph shows involuntary detrusor contraction which may be spontaneous or provoked by coughing. 
but this time the patient does complain of urinary leakage. Hence, the diagnosis is detrusor overactivity with urinary incontinence, in short, DOI. Here are the normal values for various parameters measured during UDS. Perhaps this is the most important slide that a student must remember. Unless you know these, you cannot answer MCQs in examination. Peak flow rate should be equal to or greater than 15 ml per second. Flow time should be 15 to 30 seconds. Q max should be 25 ml per second. The range is 20 to 36 ml per second. First desired to avoid will occur at 150 to 200 ml. Bladder capacity should be 400 to 600 ml. Detrusor filling pressure should be less than 15 centimeters of water and detrusor voiding pressure should always be less than 70 centimeters of water. Post void residual volume should be less than 100 ml. P vest, the normal range is 5 to 50 centimeters of water. The normal range for P apt is 5 to 50 centimeters of water and P dead is 5 to 15 centimeters of water. Now I will show you some actual recorded graphs of different cases. This is a UDS graph taken from ICS 2020 webinar showing a normal UDS. I have selected it to show what is the correct way to perform the study. It is labeled correctly to point out what was done and when it was done. One refers to zeroing, two baseline pressure, three zero detrusor pressure, four cough test, five cough stress test, six cough stress test, two seven increased bladder pressure, eight cough after voiding, CC represents systematic capacity and P2V refers to permission to void. This graph shows strong detrusor overactivity in continence. The detrusor pressure recorded is 100 centimeters of water. The red arrow at the bottom indicates that there was a leak. This brings me to the end of a very exhausting part of UDS masterclass. I hope you have understood most of what I have tried to explain. In the second part, I will discuss the remaining part of standard UDS that is voiding systematically, details of Valsalva leak point pressure, EMG recording and of course video UDS or fluoroscopic UDS including examples of actual cases. The link to this part will be uploaded as and when it is ready. So make sure that you watch it. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. The links are given below. They are available on Amazon.in. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.